Hello, guys. My name is Joba Ogwale. Welcome to Soccer Nets with me. I'm the chief editor of SoccerNets.ng. And once again, I'm here again with one of the best analysts that I've met. And his name is Kola Babatunde. And once again, we'll be talking about football generally. So, Kola, welcome to the show. Yeah, and it's great to be here. And thanks for having me, Joba. I understood the fact that uh, you couldn't really call my name because Arsenal gave Liverpool a bashing yesterday. <laughs> but it's one of those things. And just one of those things. Well, who cares? We won the league already, so nobody cares about it. Well, this or that's, that's true. <laughs> that's true. But, that's true. Anyways, but, you know, at least it's some bragging rights for us. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. In this very, you know, <laughs> blur, blurry season and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, it's actually been a bad season for Arsenal. And speaking about that, I, I, yeah. I love the fact that, okay, you started with, okay, the, um, the banter of, okay, beating Arsenal and something. Arsenal has not really had a, a remarkable season. Um, what do you think yeah. has been Arsenal's problem this season? Well, um, a lot of things, um, and it isn't what um, just started this season. Um, it, it has been uh, a string of events from, you know, the past a few years, right from the time uh, as a vendor left, which some people thought it was a little bit too late, which I agree with that school of thought, up to in our memories, uh, you know, time where we thought, okay, we probably we are onto something, onto a project, and the project capitulated at the end of last season, and this is in the thing, you know, as three managers already, uh, in our started the season a bit woefully, uh, Freddie Yumba came in on an interim basis couldn't really steady the ship. And then Mikel Ateta has shown, you know, some signs of progress, you know, uh, over the past few weeks. Uh, the team, you know, they now look solid defensively, you know, and these were defenders uh, that at uh, certain point they said were uncoachable, you know, and um, they, they've looked decent against Liverpool. Yes, they, they, they held their own. Yeah, you might say uh, Liverpool have won the league and it wasn't really, you know, they're all, but... So, uh, from an Arsenal perspective, you say it was a good show because Liverpool threw in, you know, what they could throw in yesterday to try to get the equalizer and probably win the game. So it's it's been a, a bad season, just like you stated earlier for us now. But uh, on the basis of what Ateta has shown over, you know, the, the, the past couple of weeks and months, it is um there is a little bit of positivity, you know, of optimism going on around the Arsenal camp that. Uh, maybe these guys want to something, and it looks like one that isn't ready to, you know, to to just come there and settle for less. A um, few days ago, he called out the owners, uh, you know, uh, on spending that can't just, you know, magically build a team that will compete. You have to go into the market, buy quality players and all. So it's it, it looking like Ateta, you know, knows what he's doing. He has given them to basically and you know, help them to build the team, but. We never can tell it is that now. You can't say this is going to go this way or that is going to go, you know, uh, that way. But as for us now and Mikel Ateta, they look like they know. Ateta look, looks like he knows what, you know, he is doing and he just needs the backing of the board. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of agree with you. And, but this week is actually an important week for you. And yeah. it, will, it will also lead me to next season. Now, Arsenal does not look like they would qualify for Europe next season. Because right now, I think Spurs holds the final yeah. Europa League um, position. But now you play, but now you play Manchester City on Saturday. Yeah, and yeah. You, you just defeated Liverpool yesterday by two goals to one. Do you think the win over yeah. Liverpool will give you confidence going into the clash, knowing that you lost earlier um, when the league resumed by three goals to nothing at the Etihad Stadium? Do you think the morale, um, well, the morale will be boosted after um, that Liverpool win going into the clash against City on Saturday? Well, I think yes, it's going to it's going to boost morale and all, but um, I think the game. We, Against Manchester City is a game you really can say, and it's about morale for us. Now it's about what you get on that day, uh, because it has not been too good, or let me say it has been so bad for us now against um Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. You know, for the past two seasons or so, the last time Arsenal defeated Manchester City, you know, was in the FA Cup, two goes to one. Um, that's now went on to win um the 
the, the title against Chelsea in the final. I think that was in 2017. That's three years ago. But we can't, we, we really can't but, you know, acknowledge how well uh, Pep Guardiola's Manchester City, you know, has grown since then. That was his first season in the Premier League. Uh, he was trying to grow the team as Wenger was still in charge of us now. I had big players that could, you know, uh, you could you could uh, beat your chest that they will turn up in big games in the likes of Alexis Sanchez, you know. But right now, you, you look at the Aston side and you say, okay, maybe they lack um, some big big game players. Alexander Lacazette looked like one, you know, when he first came in. He dropped up. Recently, he has looked like, okay, maybe he has found his mojo back against this solid team. He's given his performance against Spurs and um, yesterday against Liverpool. Uh, he's the only one that looks like okay, a big game player right now, you know, in the Arsenal side. And that has always been Arsenal's problem against the top side. They tend to capitulate and, you know, you don't have this clutch player, you don't have this player that takes things by the own and, you know, tries to drive him, you know, to, to, to victory against the top teams. And going by recent, you know, showings against Manchester City, Pep Guardiola's Manchester City, you could say there is really no hope for us now, but just like you pointed out, they, they should probably draw morale from the fact that they defeated the champions. But let's not forget these same champions, you know, were defeated 4 new by Manchester City, you know, just some weeks ago. So you could say Arsenal defeated Manchester, uh, Liverpool. Manchester City also defeated Liverpool. So these teams are capable, you know, of, of you know, pulling something off against Liverpool. It's going to be a different ball game, you know, and it's going to be an FA Cup semi-final. We all know how Pep loves, you know, to go for every trophy and fight for every trophy available. He has a squad depth. He rested the likes of Kevin De Bruyne against Bournemouth, you know, and they still somehow, you know, found victory. KDB has always been, you know, a turn in the flesh of Arsenal. All these things come together and you might say, okay, Arsenal do not have a chance against Manchester City. But it is football and anything can happen. Yeah, uh, it's one of the games to look forward to this weekend. And I'm sure, I hope for Arsenal's fans' sake, for your sake also, I hope you guys win. Because uh, uh, it's actually been a really, really, really dash season for, 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 you, for you guys. You guys are hoping to... I, I, think, I think if Arsenal manage to, you know, find victory against Manchester City, I think it's going to be a landmark victory, you know. And in the Mikel Ateta project, and um, it's going to um, be something that my sport and the Arsenal team on, you know, to to achieve great things come next season. Because uh, if they can defeat Liverpool and Manchester City within the space of you know a week, um, it's going to boost their credentials, and you know things will probably start taking them serious, you know, from from um, uh, that victory if they can you know manage to find a victory against Manchester City. Manchester City, yeah. Well, well, we'll be looking forward to that. But moving away from uh, from Arsenal, um, there's um, let's come back home. Not really home though. About our players, you know, it's actually a busy period right now. The transfer, the transfer with window has opened. Now, some of our players are on the move, while some are prepared, waiting to make the move. But um, I would like to speak on two particular players. But first, let me start with um, Maduka Okoye. He moved to, he joined Sparta Rotterdam and um, every DDC club um, in Poland on a two year deal with an option to sign for another two years, depending on performance. Uh, what do you make of the move? You know, he was playing in the fourth division in the, in the German league, but now he's made the way to the Dutch top flights. What do you make of the move and what does it mean for Genet, well, the Super Eagles manager? Well, uh, I think um, personally, um, the move um, should be a great one for uh, Maduka Okoye. Like you pointed out, he was in the fourth division in Germany with uh, Düsseldorf. And um, now he has made the leap to the first division in Poland. We don't know if he will become the first choice. There's another question. You know, there's a difference between making the move and, you know, actually getting playing time. Um, but he is a decent goalkeeper, a bit in my eyes, not too great. But a decent one, given the, the few times I've seen him play. Uh, hopefully, the move is going to be one that's going to be good for the Super Eagles and for him personally. You know, probably work with a better goalkeeper trainer and gain, you know, more uh, top like experience, get more exposure. But he's just 20 years old. He has his future ahead of him. You know, it depends on how hard, how, uh, how uh, well he wants, you know, success in his career. But it's a good move for him. I just said, 
Uh, last season, I think he made about 14 appearances, considered 26 goals, which is really, you know, uh, a, a good level like that. That's, he averages um, um, almost two goals, you know, considered per match, and he had just two clean sheets. Uh, but as part of Rotterdam, I expect him, you know, to uh, face more competition, which will probably uh, help him develop his skills more, which will be a good thing for the Super Eagles. And like you mentioned, you know, after the movie said, uh, the, 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 his debut with the Super Eagles was a massive experience for him. I think that, that, that was the biggest stage, you know, in his career, that is, you know, getting that appearance for the Super Eagles. And I think he will have put him more, you know, in, 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 in the eyes of the world, which will probably have been one of the factors that brought about this move, you know, for him. So it's a great move for him. And he's not going to be the person you have to play for Sparta Rotterdam, you know, I think Sani Keita, the yeah. famous Sani Keita also played, and you know one other super player featured, you know, for this side in the past. So I expect the Dutch league is a great place, you know, for you to develop, especially. Uh, so I expect him to 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 take mm-hmm. his opportunity, and let's see how he goes. He's just 20 years old, so uh, as you know, goalkeepers they keep into their 30s, mm-hmm. you know, late 30s for the ones mm-hmm. that their body permits. So he has his future, you know, ahead of him. Yeah. Um. Now before before we move away from Maduka Okoye. I want to ask something. Do you think his move to the Dutch league right now will play a mind a, a role in Gennett Swartz's decision for Super Eagles permanent number one? Because you know, for, for for a very long time now, we've been having issues in the goalkeeping and, and department. In fact, the reason why Maduka Okoye was brought in was called up is because okay, we know we uh, we still haven't solved the goalkeeping situation. In our in in our thing now, there there have been criticism that okay okay he, he has adopted as a future number one, but there was criticism then that okay he was playing in the German fourth fourth tier, and but now that he has moved to the Dutch top flight, do you think that will convince Gennett Ford to probably name him as the permanent number one, or you still think okay he still needs to prove himself, both on both in the Dutch, the Dutch top flight and probably in some of these African uh, Cup of Nations qualifiers that we have? I think the one thing I appreciate about General Rowe, despite the fact that he tries to keep a you know, solid spine, you know, in the Super Eagles team, he also, you know, uh, praises performance, you know, and um, he plays um, these players uh, going by how uh, well they, they, they play for their cup club and, you know, in the Super Eagles. I think... Um, in moving to the um, Dutch top flight, we will not automatically, you know, guarantee him a starting shirt in the Super Eagles. I still think he needs to prove himself and needs to, you know, show up every time he's called upon that I deserve this number one place. And like you pointed out earlier, the goalkeeping spot, you know, is there for the taking. Uh, since um, Kali Keme, unfortunately, uh, had to uh, drop out from football, we've not, we look like uh, we've not found a replacement since that time. Johnny Akwey, you know, flatters to deceive. You know, for his club, he puts in great performances, super good sometimes. But generally, you have this history feeling when you have Daniel Akbe, you know, in goal. Uzo also, you know, a good goalkeeper, a decent, but you still feel like he has something uh, that could still, you know, uh, develop a little bit of refinement, you know, in Uzo. So the goalkeeping position is there for the taking, and it's up to Maduka Okoye to step up. But I don't think General is going to automatically give him that spot. Just because he made that move to Sparta Rotterdam, I think he needs to to earn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I kind of agree with you because when I was in Uyo last time when Super Eagles played, I asked uh, Raw this this same question, and he said he, he he has not even moved to Sparta Rotterdam. Then he Raw was like, okay, he's not going to throw him into the free right right away because he still needs a little bit of experience, and he does not even have experience of African foot. African football yet, so I think I I agree with you. Now, but moving away from Maduka Okoye, there was also before we moved to Osuna, which is actually the big news. There was there's one thing I would like to ask you. There was also this um move from this player, Cyril uh, Dessas. He moved from um Erevan in and in Holland to Ghent in Belgium. Now he finished as the Dutch. League's top scorer last season with 15 goals and four assists. And I 
I think I don't know if you read the piece that I wrote that okay, his move to gang in Belgium means probably means it's not better than what we currently have because everybody was out there was like was celebrating when he decided to switch international allegiance to Nigeria. Now, what do you make of the move moving from a Dutch league to a side in Belgium that did not even qualify for Europe? They are not in the Champions League, they are not in the Europa League. Genk finished seventh in the Belgian top flight last season. Last season. What do you make of that move? Do you think? So someone was like, okay, saying it's the developmental league, so it, it, it's his development, you understand? But I was like, okay, this is this guy is 25 already, and he finished as a top scorer in Holland. Previous, if you look at if you look at previous uh, players that have finished as top scorers in Holland, the likes of Good Vanessa, they've made the grade to one of the top five leagues in Europe. So why is it that okay, Dressers is moving from Holland to a mid-table side in Belgium, not even a top side in Belgium. I think I'm um, looking at it. We will look at it, you know, in different angles. Uh, probably a lack of self-belief. You know, I uh, uh, probably an imposter syndrome of not wanting, you know, to be found out. We could say that. We could also say, okay, uh, it feels like he still needs. You know, to, to play in a league, you know, with less pressure uh, before making that big move. But even if you still feel like you, you do not need that big move, uh, I don't know if Erwin forced him out of you know that side, which is very unlikely as he was a top scorer last season. I think he, he, he needed to have stayed with Erwin in the Dutch league, you know, even if he still wanted to develop, not going from the Dutch league to the Belgian league, not even a top side in the Belgian league that would probably play in the Champions League. It's, it's side that finished seventh position for um, uh, his credentials and for uh, his, um, his super eagles, um, how would I put it, for his current uh, fight for the super eagles starting shirt, I think that move was not good, you know, for his career. Uh, you will see the likes of Osimhen wanting to move from Lille to Napoli. It, it's a move, you know, that you could say he moved from uh, a, a, a smaller club to a bigger club, you know, in Lille to Napoli. Uh, these players that, that want it, that feel like they are good enough to get it. Cyril Dressers, for me, made a bad move for his credentials. But let's see how he goes. Let's see if he reaches, you know, the Belgian League apart. And from there, you, you probably move to a top five league. But as of this moment, I, I don't think the move, you know, was a um, great one for him, and I, I quite agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you said something about um, Osime moving from you to Napoli, which is actually the uh, main point of discussion today. The trans, the, his future has been like a subject of debate all summer. Ever since he scored 18 goals in 38 appearances for uh, Liu in his first season, it was obvious that okay, okay, he, he was going to attract interest from several top clubs in Europe. Now he has been in discussion. Napoli have been leading the race, are leading the race to sign to sign him. And he was even in Naples last two weeks or so to discuss with the club or officials, you understand? Well, the transfer saga has been drawing all as in has been going on for so long that it's even getting tiring. But right now, what do you really let me uh, let me start by asking you that what do you really make of the move from Liu to Napoli? Do you think it's actually a good move for him? Because there has been a debate about okay whether it's actually a right place, the right place for him or it's not the right place for him. Well, for me, uh, uh, when I first got the news, uh, I asked um, why Osimhen wants to you know leave Napoli um, Liu after just a season after a first uh, great season in the French League with Lyon, and um, 18 goals in 38 appearances, why not just stay in France and, you know, continue developing? Because I've always seen France as a very technical, you know, league. People might say Farmers League and all, but I've always seen them as a league that produces, you know, the best players in the world. Their football is technically, you know, great. It's, it's a place where you can learn to really play well without too much pressure, you know, on your skills, you know, and develop yourself. Why I, I don't you know like the career for that? 
Uh, but for Napoli, as a football club and the kind of football they play, you could say, okay, yes, it is great football and it will be right for him. You watch the likes of uh, Martens, Mili, Aleon, you see here, and you, you love the way they play. You know, they are still football. Regardless of the manager, whether it is Sari, whether it is General Gatto, so they are built up as always, you know, being a uh, you know, joy to watch. Uh, I think Milik, Napoli are about losing Milik, uh, but they still have Martens and Insignia, uh, which I think is going to be a lot of competition for Osime. He probably believes in, in himself, which is a quite an opposite of what we, we spoke about with Serie Dressers. He believes he can go there, you know, fight for the starting shirt and show himself, you know, in the Serie A and in the Champions League. Let's not forget that Liu are going are not going to the Champions League, you know, next season. Now, play looks like they might, you know, go to the Champions League next season. That might be one of the things, you know, that influence the decision. But if he, he wants, you know, to, to keep get, getting, you know, starting shirt playing time without, you know, really getting uh, a lot of stiff competitions, I would have advised him to stay at Leo. But going to Napoli, he would need to, you know, um, up his game because Jerez Martins is a very, very good striker, you know, that he has to go up against. So, yeah, uh, yeah, but, it, yeah, but it, it, it's a mixed feeling for me. Yeah, you know the issue actually is people are saying okay, you should stay at Liu at least for one more season. But I think the problem right now is not it's because of of Liu's model. Liu bought him for twelve million euros from Royal and Charleroi, and Liu's model is always to buy a player cheap and sell them big. And right now, according to CIES. The statistic board that ranks the value of player. Yeah. Player is worth more than five times yeah. what Lily paid for him, you understand? And Liu believe that okay, yeah. they they might as as well cash in on him this season. So this, I think that's why Liu is allowing him to leave. But the problem right yeah, now exactly, exactly. Well, from from the club perspective, you are quite right. I do not fault Liu. You know, they are a club that they they need to survive. They are not, you know, the biggest you know uh, club in France in terms of uh, you know money monetarily. So they need to make profit as much as possible. You know, but uh, my own perspective was from Osimhen's angle. Uh, but for Liu, I think it will be good for them, regardless. They are going to make profit. Uh, rumors, rumors have it that um, he's going to go for nothing less than 18 million. Yeah. If he, he doesn't go for less than 18 million, that would be a brilliant business for for Liu. Even as an Arsenal fan, if you know uh, Arsenal get a player for 12 million and you want to sell him for 50 million, after just one season, <laughs> I'm going to advise the board to, to to cash in because that's a huge profit that you can continue you know using to develop your squad. On the long run. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I agree with you. But um, I, I, I also agree with you in the sense that I believe Osime will fit in perfectly at Napoli. Although you said something about Andres um, um, Martens, I don't think he will really need to compete with Andres Martens because the way Napoli plays, even when Milik, um, uh, Mil I think he's coming in to replace um, Milik. And Milik and Martins, I've seen them play together in a couple of in, in a couple of games. So I think the style, their style are two different styles. So I don't think he will come in to compete with Andres uh, Martins. People are worried about okay, maybe Napoli is actually the right club for him. But I think probably those people have not seen Napoli play. It was for a striker of Osimhen's quality. I think he will fit in into Napoli's style of play. Yes, they have general Gattuso, but a major aspect of their of their game is still based on the precepts of um Mauricio, Mauricio Sari. Then you understand. So they play beautiful football. If you look mm -hmm. at their build up play from the back, the way they move the ball quickly, you understand. So I think Osime will fit in will fit will fit will fit in perfectly. The only issue I have about yeah, him moving yeah. to Napoli is because of the owner and the Laurentius. You understand? The Laurentius is yeah. probably the <laughs> um, Syria, Daniel Lev, you understand? Exactly, exactly. So, <laughs> so, so it's it's not because, for example, let's say Osime did well at Napoli in the next uh, for for two, for the first two years or so, 
because of the ridiculous way as in transfer clause that only may include in the deal, he may not be able to leave immediately, you understand? So I think that's the issue that I have with, in, with moving to Napoli. But aside from that, I think Napoli is actually a good club for him. He's still, he's still in his... Yeah. He's still just 21 years years of age. So I think he still have about 10 years, uh, about 9 to 10 years to play to, to play football. And it's not he has not even reached, reached his peak, you understand? And this is... Yeah. Napoli has shown right from the onset, that they are really, really interested in him. In fact, I read it somewhere that General Gattuso decided to give up, um, give up um, some of some portions of his wages just for the clubs to raise funds to sell, to sign the Nigerian. So this shows that okay, they, they are really, really serious about bringing Osime to the club. And uh, uh, contrary to reports, also I think he was. He, they, they were reports that he was not too keen on the move to Italy, but I think it was because of his agent. And yesterday, yesterday, um, the report came out that he has changed his agent. That okay, he has sacked his agent and he has brought in a new agent. What do you make of that? Well, uh, I think when it comes to you know transfer times like this, you should have an agent beside you that that has your best best interest at heart. You shouldn't be a money. You know, grabbing money on uh, as much as uh, you know, as, uh, as that has been his best interest at heart. You know, wanting to push him just to go after the money, which is likely the case. And looking at Osimhen, he looks like a player that you know is focused and motivated, and uh, that doesn't really necessarily think just about the money in football. He wants to play football. He's an hungry player. So if that kind of a move happens, we can only you know conclude that. Uh, he probably changed the agent because uh, the agent uh, didn't have his best interest at heart. Which, in future, might, we might be wrong, you know, because we never can tell, you know, these things. But from uh, what we've known of Osim, Victor Osimhen in the past, uh, I don't think he's one that is necessarily after the money. He wants to play football. He's hungry, you know, for the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully this um, this saga ends. Very soon, cause I, I I was discussing with someone that okay the 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 longer this thing goes, it is actually not really really good for 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 him. It's not really a good thing for him, not really a good thing for him. Cause I believe even these reports, these rumors coming flying around every time, every time is actually not really a good thing for a twenty-one year old to be experiencing. But uh, I think the reason why it's like this is that, especially among Nigerian, among Nigerians, is that we've never, we've not really had a transfer as big like this for for some time, right now. You understand? So I think that's why there is a lot of looking pause, a lot of frenzy over the issue. But I just hope that okay, he makes a decision that is actually good for his career. On moving to Napoli, I think. Napoli is actually the right club for right club for right club for him. He would fit in perfectly well into that that so stuff. I'm talking about racism or something. Yes, racism may be right religiously, but even in France, where the national team is made up of black um, almost full of black, black players, understand? You have still racism. Racism is a, racism is everywhere. So I don't think we can really use he can really use that as an excuse to say, okay, he does not want to go to it because, okay, let's even as in that, okay, you go to England. Mm-hmm. So for example, I was still racially abused by a 12, by a 12 year, 12 year old recently. You understand? So I think it is not really about, okay, maybe racism in Italy or, 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 or something. So if it's, if it's about that, it's, 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 it's everywhere. And I believe um, he shouldn't, Try to say, okay, I'm not moving to Italy because because of that. But if he's moving to Italy, it should be a decision that he makes himself. Uh, and this is where I want to continue my my development, my development. And if he's not, if he's not really comfortable about moving to Napoli or something, and there's no way. I don't think Lille will be forced to sell him, even even though Napoli are ready to pay uh, Lille's price tag. But what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. So, so well, uh, 
I, I, I think at the end of the day, it depends on the player. Like you said, if he doesn't want to move, I, I don't think they can force him to move. If it feels like it is a move for him, all well and good. Just like you pointed out, brand of football shooting, and um, and you address you kind of address the, the racial, you know, uh, the racist issue, you know, in Italy and um, how it can shine. And despite of that, uh, hopefully, uh, Osime, you know, makes the move, or even if he's going to stay at Leo, he should stay at Leo, and all this should should stop because it is not so healthy for his career. You know, if he's going to be in the news, he should be, you know, for footballing reasons only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you. So, but hopefully we can, yeah, there are still uh, some of our, our, our other guys hoping to move. Um, Henry Oyekuru, I think I, they said he's back at Monaco now, but there, there are reports that he is moving. He's also, he must also be on the move. There's Emmanuel Dennis, he has links with a move to Croatia. Russia does not, and even Napoli, Napoli also. So I think this is actually a good period for Nigerian, Nigerian football and Nigerian footballers also. And I just hope they can hope they can continue to make the right, right, right move. Yeah, but before I let you go, I would like to ask you about this particular, a former Arsenal player, um, Alex Wobi. What do you make of Alex Wobi's performance so far? At Everton, it's been really, really, really below par. Uh, I, I won't lie to you. Um, while Alex Wobi was at Arsenal, um, I was a big fan. You know, I have always defended Alex Wobi because I had the sentiments towards him. I I loved uh, the fact that I knew when he got promoted to the first team, and I felt like people were too, you know, hard on him. Uh, but over the years, it seemed like Alex Wobi has lost himself. I will, we might, we might say that he, he became a victim of his own versatility because I think um, moving him out wide, you know, in the Arsenal team, I was the beginning of uh, everything that is, you know, going on with Alex Obi right now. Personally, I still feel like his best position is centrally, you know, where he can keep the ball, he keeps the ball so well, drags the ball so well. Uh, but his end product has always been, you know, the questionable part of his. Uh, game if uh you can't i always tell people if as a player you can't be so productive you know in an arsenal team i mean you know the stats now the fans go for assist goals it is not likely that you go to an everton side and you know suddenly develop your you know your statistics especially looking at this everton side the way they play they mark for the large part of the game and try to play on the counter you know, you see Alex Wobi on the wings, always upping the left back yes. or the right yeah. back, you know. You know, so I, I always knew his, his end product or, you know, was always going to drop at Everton and to be more about his work ethic. Uh, if he's lucky, you know, you know, to find a coach that will see the central midfield in him because I still believe he, he, his best is in central midfield. An example for me is Gene Wijnaldum. I don't know if you follow this progress right from his early days, but I know I've seen why I don't play out wide, play behind the striker. Okay. Sometimes he won't, you know, um, strike, uh, take up the striking position for the team in Newcastle. But under Jurgen Klopp, he was developed into a central midfielder. Statistically, you might look at Junior Vidalum and say he doesn't give up much assists or score more goals. But his ball driving skill, press, you know, beating skills, and you know, ball carrying skills help the team a lot, especially in a team like Liverpool, you know, where as a central midfielder, you are not really required, you know, to make that run into the box always and get the goals or the assist. So I think I see Alex Wobi in that mode. If he continues to get played out right like he's currently doing, I don't think he's going to get past, you know, this Alex Wobi that we're seeing, which should be quite unfortunate because uh, I liked Alex Wobi, you know, uh, you know, uh, while he, he got promoted he, so to the team right from from his developmental stages, you know, in Arsenal Academy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. I agree with you. I think it's actually his best role is that central, the central position. And if you look at his time at um, his games he has played for Everton, which which is funny because he started his time at Everton. Um, he started well, very, very well. He scored. I think he scored in, against Wolves and he scored against Lincoln. 
FC in the big cup, you understand? We think that okay, probably everything will give him that freedom. The with, with no more pressure on him at us now, probably you will, will get the freedom to play. But I I think he has been uh, a victim of of yeah, or like you said, versatility because. Uh, he plays on the wide, and most of the time he's always useless on the on, on the on, on, on the wide. Uh, for 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 now, I think I don't think Everton will sell him though. To be honest, I don't think Everton will will, will sell him. For uh, the from the the France pressure is is building. But I think if he should fail to make the, uh, to cut it at Everton, I think the best option for him now would be for him to probably move to La Liga or the Italian Serie. A. There, his game may still be suited to those kind of leagues because in, in La Liga in, and in the Serie A, it is more about technicality. They appreciate players like um, Alex Roby, who is actually versatile, who can play multiple roles. As long as you are just saying you are doing the basic of, of, the, of those roles, you understand. But you know, in England, if you're not scoring, if you're not producing assist, if you're not okay, showboating, you understand, taking on defenders, probably. That means you're, you're probably, probably useless, you understand? But I just hope that, okay, maybe by next season, Ancelotti will see that, okay, he's wasted on the, on the wings and probably moving to a central position. I hope so by next, by next season. So anyways, um, call up, uh, thanks for, we've come to the end of the show and I would like to appreciate mm-hmm. you for joining us on this week's show. Yeah, you understand? It's really, really been really been informative, exciting, especially the way you analyze that now progress and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, you understand. But I hope for your sake as now wins on on Saturday they beat Manchester City on, on, on Yeah, on, on, we'll keep our fingers crossed and you know, thanks for having me and it was, you know, great it's always great to, to talk football with you, you know, both or online, offline, yeah, you know, yeah. audio, visual, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's always yeah. great. Yeah, and I hope probably when we meet you again, you'll we'll be kind enough to answer to our call. Always, 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 always. Yeah. yeah. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, so guys, we've come to the end of the show. You can click on the subscribe button on our YouTube page to continue to watch some of our, uh, all of our videos. But once again, we'll be back again next week to talk about football. So I'll be great weekend, guys. Bye.